Now, a number of you will have noticed that Di Roberts actually is not able to be with us today. We're extremely grateful to Dom Chapman, who is the Director of Learners at Brockenhurst College, for standing in at the very last minute to um, talk to us today. Thank you very much, Dom, because I realise it's almost, uh, you know, it's halfway up the country for you. So, um, now, Brockenhurst College is one of the most successful sixth form colleges in the UK, but it also has um, links right out into the community and uh, providing access to learning for adult learners and uh, a wide range of uh, um, other students like apprentices. So we're lo really looking forward to what you're going to say to us today. Thank you. Uh, good morning, folks. Um, so, yeah, my, my name's Dominic Chapman. I'm Director of Learners at Brockenhurst College. Um, I'm going to take you through um, the work we've been doing over the last year or so, implementing the um, exceptional student experience projects with IBM and Portal. Um, really, really excited to be here because it's been a very big part of what I've done over the last year or so. And we've actually gone live with a lot of this stuff um, in the last few days. So um, I, I, I'm really, really good to be able to talk in the present tense. And just to give you a bit of a flavour about the college to start with. Um, so we have about 8,000 learners all in all, about 1,000 apprentices, about 600 staff. Um, however, our core business is, is sixth form. We have about 3,000 16 to 19 learners, primarily doing A-levels and vocational programmes. Um, and that, that is really uh, the heart of the college. And, and, and that's where we focused everything that I'm going to talk about today um, initially, although we've got some quite significant expansion plans over the next uh, year or so. So um, we are a successful college. Um, however, um, we find ourselves, like a lot of FE colleges, with a number of challenges. Um, and we, we set out on the road um, around uh, what we've done over the last year, really because we knew and we understood that we, we were not in a position to be able to stand still. Um, and we started to look at the, the ESE project, really because we were looking to, um, to do something around exceptional learning, do something about changing the student experience. Um, and it was attractive to us because of both the, 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 uh, the technologies that, that were in there, which were tried and trusted, trusted with IBM and Portal, uh, but also very innovative, innovative stuff. And um, the, the real key thing for us is that within our, within our catchment area, nobody is doing anything like what we, have, um, what we are now doing. In, in terms of us, uh, we do have a very strong leadership. We have been Grade 1 Ofsted um, since 2004. Um, but we do have quite a forward-thinking management team, leadership team, and that's why we've embarked on this journey. It's really a case of getting ahead of the competition rather than, um, than standing still and waiting something to happen. So um, what we have been doing is, uh, is looking at three significant areas. Uh, and it's probably just worth contextualising a little bit about where we are. Um, so Brock, Brock College is, is right in the middle of the New Forest. And when I say it's in the middle of the New Forest, I mean it's right in the middle of the New Forest. So we have a very wide catchment area to Southampton in the east, Bournemouth and Poole Conurbation in the west, north to Salisbury, and even we have students come across from the Isle of Wight. But the key thing is that almost all of those students have to pass somewhere else that they could study uh, bef uh, in order to come uh, to us. So uh, we are in an incredibly competitive environment for sixth form students. Um, furthermore, um, we're very close to the Hampshire Dorset border, and we've got um, six schools and sixth forms there that are very aggressive in terms of their growth. And the other thing that we know is that in the next five years, we will see a 12% drop uh, in 16-year-olds coming out of schools within our catchment area. So we knew we had to do something about it to maintain our position. Um, and the other thing is that our financial landscape has changed significantly over the last five years. And we knew we had to do something to make sure that we, 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 may, we, we are continually to be financially viable. So we've embarked on the projects, um, and we are looking to make sure that we are able to not, not only address that 12% shortfall, but also look to grow our learner numbers. Um, retention is really, really key in the sector. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about um, what we're looking to achieve in that in a minute. Um, it's really, really important for our financial health that we are retaining our, our students. And within the projects that we are doing, we're also looking for a significant upturn in, in student satisfaction, that happiness factor, which we hope will in turn lead to uh, a, a lot of um, additional uh, students going and leaving us, progressing to wherever they need to pro progress with really, really high grades and really good outcomes. 
So we were looking for something that was student-centric. Everything that we do is very much at the heart of the student, and that's really where we've ended up in terms of the way we've chosen to implement the different, uh, different technologies. Um, so we have uh, run two projects over the last 12 months. We've gone from uh, concept to implementation in, in about 14 or 15 months. Um, one is a predictive analytics project, which is now live, um, and the second of the projects wait, uh, is our social media platform. So if we talk about the predictive analytics first, um, we are looking to ensure that uh, we can maintain our student body. Now, within the FE sector, uh, it, we have something called a 42-day rule that those of you that are in the FE sector will know very, very well. But essentially, within the first 42 days of students joining us, they are non-students in terms of being counted towards retention and indeed towards funding. Um, so we were targeting very much um, on these 42 days because students may arrive with us, we can do the hard work around recruiting, they may arrive with us, but they may well, may well leave within those first 42 days. And for us, that means that, that we, we have no funding for them, and for them it means that they've obviously... Um, arrived with us and had some kind of bad experience and chosen to leave again. So we were looking to really address that um, through, um, through the analytics and, and we, we've been able to make some significant changes on the, on the back of it. Um, so the first thing we did um, is we sought to understand what we knew about, this, uh, about our, our learners. And what we have done is we've actually built two analytics models. We've built um, what we call the start of term model and then we have an intern model. Uh, and what the start of term model is seeking to do is to try and identify those learners who are most at risk of non-retention before they even start to learn with us. So obviously as they apply uh, and, and they, they choose to become uh, a student at the college, we, we, get, we, we have an amount of information about them. We know where they live, we know what their demographic information is, we know what their ethnicity is, some health background, we know where they've been at school, and we know what their academic background is. And so we've used that to build up a picture of, these, uh, of our learners that we can use before they've arrived so that we can identify which students, as they walk through the door on day one, uh, do we need to, to make sure that we are looking after, make sure that we are paying additional, um, uh, uh, doing additional things for and come up with, with strategies. Subsequent to that, uh, we have an interim model which is looking at the behaviours that they start to exhibit once they are with us. So as they start and they've arrived with us, then they will start doing things. They will start attending classes, they will start handing in, uh, handing in work, and we're using that data to, uh, to build up a picture. And what that will do is it will compare how they're doing now against the, the kind of picture that we thought of in, um, when, when they first arrived. So we can ascertain, are, they, are, they, are their risk levels dropping, are their risk levels increasing? Now, uh, we're live on this now. Uh, we, we, we went live on this literally in the last few days. Uh, we are very much at the beginning of our understanding of this. So we have plans to, uh, to, to make this very much more sophisticated over the next couple of years. So we, we have, we're starting to feed in relatively basic data at this, at this point. So uh, attendance data, performance data. Where we're looking to get to are things like... Uh, you know, how often are they, are they interacting with our, online, uh, with our online learning platforms? Is that more or less than their peers? Does that, does that appear to be affecting their grades? And we can, we hope, become much more sophisticated in terms of the way that we're, we're understanding the risk of non-retention for our learners. Um, we built the models over uh, a number of months earlier on in the year, and um, it's using IBM SPSS software as, as its base. Uh, and the way in which we've constructed the models is, is based on a regression model over five years of history. So we've got quite detailed history uh, of where our students uh, have come from and how they've achieved as they've moved through the college with us. So we've used the five, uh, that five years' worth of data to, to sort of build and refine the models, and it's very much a refinement. It's not one of those things that you can put data into uh, and it, it magically spits out numbers at the other end. It really is looking and understanding at the data, trying to work out what is significant, uh, modelling, remodelling, and, and refining those models. When we finally got to a point where we were happy, what we did was we ran it on last year's data, um, and um, we have actually got an 87% success rate, which we're really, really happy about. 
So effectively, uh, what, what the system is, is doing is it's, it's, it's predicting the likelihood of non-retention with an 87% success rate. So that's, this is the model that we're using to go forward with now into, into next year. Um, and what we're doing is we're using that data uh, in a number of different ways. And, and the key and most significant thing that we're doing that's enabling us to do uh, is it's, it's enabling us to completely change the, the, the way that we uh, handle interventions, completely change the way in which we deal with students that have begun to have problems. So traditionally, our model was um, that uh, if the first line of problems were to occur with a student, um, it would typically be the, the, the lecturer that, that would deal with that. So, you know, so Jimmy hasn't handed his homework in, they'd sit down, we have an agreement system, they get set targets, you know, got to get your work up to speed by the end of next week. End of next week comes, nothing happens, and it then gets escalated to, to a pastoral manager who then takes on the case and deals with it. The difficulty with that is that often it's two, three, maybe four weeks down the track from the initial problem before any kind of intervention strategy at a higher level has, 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 um, starts to take place. And in a 30-week program, that's a significant amount of time. So what we are using the data for is we're putting this data out to our curriculum managers, to our lecturers, and to our pastoral managers so that they understand who they need to know and who they need to look at very, very early on. So what, we are, what we've been able to do is completely shift the way in which we're, we're handling those interactions. So we're moving from a reactive to a proactive model. We've also redesigned the organisation on the back of that, which has actually allowed us to take some cost out as well. And so we are starting to get those interactions much, much earlier than we have done before. Um, so uh, we, we're, using, uh, we're using an MIS system to do that. We're also putting the information into um, our student ILP system so the lecturers are able to see that. And interesting, just picking up on something that Rebecca said earlier, one of the things that we're doing is we're also putting the constituent parts of what's making their risk into that information. So if I'm a lecturer and I see a student is high risk, I can understand what, what factors are making, uh, are making this student high risk. And some of those will be environmental factors, and some of those will be in performance factors. And it's that, that kind of information which will help them make decisions. And crucially, what we've also decided to do is we've also decided to put this information in front of the students. Um, and we debated very long and hard on how we might do that. Because again, just picking up on, on something that was said earlier, what we wanted to make sure is... Well, how do we do this in such a way that we don't demotivate the students? If, we, if they suddenly see that they're high, very high risk, and actually, you know, the, you, we, we only think you've got about a 20% chance of getting to the end here, then why should I bother? So we've done that by, uh, by using a, a, a dashboarding system which has got speed dials in it, where regardless of their initial risk, um, every student is, starts off at, at, at the same level. Um, students may be high risk because of factors that they can't control. If they come from a particular area, a uh, particular deprived area, if they've got a particular background, that, that might just place them naturally higher risk. And that isn't their fault. So we didn't want, we didn't want to pass that information on. So what we've done is we've, we've shrouded, in, it, shrouded it in such a way that they can see if their risk levels are moving up or down um, without knowing what their ri initial risk level is. Um, it's very, very early days on this, but what it's starting to do which is what we hoped it would do, is actually spark conversations. So the students are curious. They're going, well, why, what, what, what's going on here? Why, why, am I, why am I higher risk in biology than I am in computing? And what it allows us to do is have conversations, because if we can have conversations with students, then uh, it will allow us to find out if there are issues, and it will allow us to take those all, those all important interventions. We are looking to move that into a more sophisticated uh, regime later on next year, where it will actually try and identify possible uh, strategies automatically for the student. So it might be, hey, you know, you're high risk in computing because you didn't turn up to class for three Thursdays in a row. So we can actually push that information to them. We're not there yet, but that's where we're looking to go to next year. So, the um, second major project has been our social portal. So, um, we've built a, a, a social learning platform that's based using IBM uh, Connections technology. Um, and, and this has been a, a really, really interesting journey. Both these projects are very different, but they're, they're, they're really uh, interlinked in, in, a, uh, in, in so many ways. Uh, this is a, IBM Connections is a, is a social learning platform which 
Uh, if you are a Facebook user, any kind of social media platform, LinkedIn, Twitter, you will know immediately how to use, uh, how to use the platform. Um, what I like about this, and, and I, I, initially when I looked at it, I, I was, I, I, I'd be the first to put my hand up and say I was initially quite a little bit sceptical about how we would use it. Um, but with six to nine months of being em embroiled in it, I, I, I'd become a complete convert. The beauty of the system is it takes a lot of the familiar functions that we have with, within our other social media platforms, um, but it puts them into one, uh, one, one system. And that system is a controlled environment. So what effectively we have is, is, a, is a closed environment within the college which allows us to interact with learners and with each other um, using the tools that, that we've now become very familiar with. And it's proving to be a very powerful experience. Um, we, we've seen tremendous uptake in the first few, um, few days as we've, as we've gone into implementation. So uh, what, we have, what we've done with the system is we've turned off a lot of our communications, so it's becoming our primary communications tool. So things like our student bulletin, student information is going straight out through the tool. It's going to, student, uh, it's going to uh, status updates with, with the students. Um, and what it will allow us to do is really gather huge amounts of data about how, we are, um, how students are interacting and will allow them to start to interact with other students and develop new peer groups in the same way that they do in the wider social space. it will give them a very personalized learning experience. So uh, a lot of connections is built around the concept of communities, a bit like Facebook groups. And uh, the communities will allow individual classes, curriculums, enrichments to, to build those virtual communities. And uh, that allows students to pick and choose what they, what they want to get involved in. We've got some things that all students are involved in, so we're using it for our pastoral system, we're using it for our student bulletin, we're using it to do things like travel. Um, but beyond that, they can choose who they can connect with, much the same as LinkedIn. It will do things like make recommendations to you, uh, you can see who people, how people are connected, things like that. So you can find people that, that have similar interests to you. Um, the other thing about the system is it's, it's, there are mobile apps, so, and there are push notifications with that. So uh, that's quite a powerful thing for us. Uh, and so we, we've started to see already in the first few days of, of implementation things like you know, students posting information up on forums, asking questions about initial homeworks. Other students are starting to reply to them. The great thing about it is you've got push notification that comes through in your pocket. You've got your little red circle on your phone that you can't ignore. And we're starting to see these interactions coming through. What we're hoping to achieve with this um, is that by aligning the learning and, and the, the experience that they're getting at college with the experience that they're choosing at home, uh, they're going to become far more engaged. And because they're far more engaged, that will then push them on to, to greater success. And we've gone live with this system. Uh, we, we've been uh, testing it over the last few months. We introduced it to the staff in the latter part of the last academic year. They've been doing their levels of preparation. Uh, we went live with 3,000 students on Monday. Um, <clears throat> it's Thursday now. Uh, one of the things that I have been massively surprised about is the sheer volume of activity that we've seen in the first few days, uh, <clears throat> both in terms of students interacting with each other and the staff getting to grips with uh, the new tools that they've got, which will, allow, um, which will allow them to interact with their students in different ways. One of the things that I would say about that is that from a staff perspective, it's been really, really interesting. Um, naturally, you know, with, with social media, um, you, you have those people who, are, who uh, it, 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 these days, they've probably actively chosen not to take part in social media in the wider context. It's been a little bit more of a challenge with them, uh, helping them understand that, that, that this is a closed environment. Um, because there are some people that are very nervous. However, one of the benefits that we hadn't quite anticipated was that actually a lot of the staff were really keen on it because it allowed them to actually um, retract back from uh, using things like Facebook groups where you know, there, is a, there is an element of personal risk with running, sort of, uh, running um, social media groups in the sort of wild west of Facebook. and those, uh, So actually, that's been a, an, an unplanned uh, benefit, I think, from, from the students. A uh, little bit about the Portal and IBM partnership. Um, we've worked very closely with, with both companies over the last year or so. One of the things that it has helped us do 
And one of the ways in which we, we put together the, the contract uh, was that uh, it, was, it enabled us to uh, build uh, a, a bid to put in a new STEM centre uh, through the Local Enterprise Partnership. We were successful in that, um, th thanks to the work that we were doing here. And that's enabled us to get £3.7 million pounds worth of, of funding, um, <coughs> and there is a brand new STEM centre being built on the back of the campus, which is opening next September. So, in some ways, everything that we've done um, around looking to benefit has already, we've already got the benefits of that. Um, there are some other benefits as well, some of which are, um, we are yet to explore fully. Um, one of which is that we have access to a very wide global network um, within the technologies that we've got. Um, but the other thing I would know, say about that is that we have two sister schools in China um, that, we, that we run and operate, and they are already on board with this, so they have gone live with that, uh, with this straight away. So they are um, they're working on, on connections uh, straight away, and we're just beginning to see the beginnings of um, our UK and, and Chinese starting to, to interact together. We've just done our initial work on that. It's going to be very, very exciting. And the other thing is that we've been able to harness the expertise um, of IBM and Portal, and they've actually come in and worked with our own students to help build, uh, build their own skills. So, just to finish off, um, you know, a lot of what we're doing is, is really around putting the students at the centre of what we're doing. We, we are trying to achieve um, an environment which will be exciting for the students. Uh, we are trying to work on making sure that when they arrive, that they want to come to us and that they are happy while they're here and we can spot those problems before that they are actually starting so that we can make sure that they have, they have a, 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 a positive journey. For our student that I've just highlighted here, you know, it's really about their success. One of the things that we're really, really proud of in the college, regardless of our exam results and whatever, is the level of progression that we get. We have really, really positive progression through to universities, through to apprenticeships increasingly, through to, to the world of work. Um, so one of the things that I haven't talked about here is in the long term is harnessing our current group of students as alumni and connecting them back through connections um, so that over the course of the next few years we can actually start to build up a much greater connection. We're quite good at ho holding on to our students while they're at university and understanding what they're doing. Four or five years down the track when they leave uni, they go, to uni uh, they go into jobs. We're not so good at harnessing that. And obviously we've got this huge student body who are doing very, su very successful things. So, um, interesting worldwide opportunities, as I've just talked about. Um, and we're hoping that the students will, will take on what, we, what we're doing to, to reach new goals in terms of uh, higher goals, in terms of, of, of better output. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dom. And we um, hadn't realised that you had only gone live this week, yeah. and so uh, it's been a really hectic week for, for the nice whole college. About, it's nice to be able to talk in the present tense. <laughs> <laughs> right. Questions, uh, comments, colleagues? Yes, please go ahead. What was it that you took away in terms of load on the teachers that made it possible for you to be able to see this as a benefit to them in doing their job. Um, are you talking about the, the, um, the social media stuff? Y yes, I beg your pardon, yep. Um, and that's, that's been an interesting, um, that's a really good question actually. One of the things that, um, that I didn't touch on is we, we, always, we already have a quite a well-developed Moodle e-learning platform. So uh, when we were putting this in, what we've actually done is we've co-branded the two systems. So if you look at the two systems, they, they look very, very similar. You can flip between them with, with, within one click. Um, and we were very clear on what we were looking for Moodle to do, which was all the things that Moodle is very good at, and all the things that Connections to do, which is all the things that Connections... And there, are, there is some overlap in terms of functionality, things like forums, for example. So, so we were very explicit about that. In terms, of, um, in terms of the staff, we sold it very much in terms of this is additional tools that you can use in able to change the way that you're doing things within your classroom. Um, and we're quite fortunate in terms of our teaching body is, very, is, is, is pretty good at, 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 at taking on new things. So that, that was the way that we, we did it. So we've, we've, we've pretty much branded it and sold it as, a, as an extension to our, uh, our e-learning platform. 
Uh, hi, uh, Roger Emery, ironically from Southampton Solent University, just up the road. So, <laughs> our first question, can I invite you to come up and talk to the rest of our team at Solent at some point, because this is really interesting. It's a lot closer than Manchester, so yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a long <laughs> way to come to meet each other. Um, but the second thing is just looking at the, the HE side of it, because we're yeah. doing sort of similar things, yeah. and we're looking back at where our students are coming from in FE, is, is do you have any plans or... or, or or aspirations for this to prepare students for HE, so predict further beyond their journey through Brockenhurst, um, um, so that you could support them through Brockenhurst to be better at, you know, or, or I don't know, better is the right word, but um, achieve better at HE. In terms of our analytics, uh, it's one of those things that is really going to be a, a, a growing part of what we do. You know, our initial focus was. Um, you know, we don't have a retention problem at the college, as you, you're probably aware of, but, um, but we know we can do better. And in particular, within those first 42 days, we, we know there are students that come and go. And we, we, we don't. So th there is our initial focus. And, and, and you know, the reason that we went for that first is, if I'm being honest, is probably a financial one, because that's where our greatest immediate financial payback will be. You know, if, we t if we keep another 25 students uh, this year, it's £100,000 of funding that we wouldn't have had. So, um, but we, we, we do have plans for additional models, and, and, and one of those models will be upon um, effectively looking at uh, a, a predict, predicted outcomes in terms of performance. So, possibly, um, we, we will need to do more in terms of our base data before we can do that. So, obviously, we know, you know, students come from this particular school, this particular area, this particular set of GCSEs, they went on to achieve X and they went to, to institution Y. But I think we will, before we do that, we'll probably become more sophisticated. So we'll be looking at other factors. We'll be looking at environmental factors. How are they doing on their course in terms of performance? You know, how often are they, you know, some of the things I was saying earlier on about, you know, are they interacting with our systems more or less than their peers? How does that affect their performance? Because that's where you get that level of sophistication that says, well, actually, you know, you might want to go and make sure that you're reviewing your homework because the students that have got A's, what we know is, actually, they went back and they did this. So that, was, that, that I think, is where we're going to head. It, it, it's probably two years out, if I'm, if I'm being honest. So we need to understand what we've got and make, sure, make, it, uh, make it really exciting. Any more questions, comments? Yes, we have a question up there. Um, if, you could, uh, uh, if you could go up. Um, about uh, yes. two thirds of the way up. Is there anybody on this side? Take one more question after this. Thank you. Uh, hi, really enjoyed your presentation. So, so thanks for that. Just a wee question about your. Um, you mentioned an accuracy rate yep. in terms of your predictive model of yep. uh, eighty-seven percent. Yeah. So, if I've understood you correctly, uh, what that means is that thirteen out of a hundred students um, who perhaps are at risk are not being identified. So what's your approach to dealing with uh, those students? And the second part, or the corollary to that question is, how, did you, how do you deal with uh, students who are identified as at risk by the system, uh, but who actually, um, in, in reality, uh, are not at risk at right. all? Um, that's, that, that's two good questions. Let me take the second one first. Uh, <laughs> One of the things that, that um, so, so we have these two models. So what we do know is that you know student A is um, is, is high risk as they as they walk into the college. Now, a lot of that might be environmental. So you know we we we, we pull in students from from some quite deprived areas, for example, um, and, and that will have an effect on on their level of risk if we look at outcomes. But as you well know, you know there are there are. Um, there are always exceptions that, that prove the rule. So, and there are some really, really good kids that you think are never going to achieve, and they're the ones that, that just defy all the odds and, and, and do it. So, um, you know, we will be looking at them. We're looking, you know, we've got light touch on this. So, we've done things like we've put those students with particular um, pastoral managers who we know are very good at looking after a particular type of student. So. Uh, in doing that, we can just make sure that they're getting the level of attention that they need. What we should find is that as we run, start through the, 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 uh, the termly models and we start to see performance data and attendance data and all those kind of things, their risk level should start to drop off.
because it, it's giving us a high level of confidence that they are uh, able to um, achieve on the course. So, so I, I, hopefully that's answered that question. With regards to the 13%, um, that, that's a really good question. And if I'm being honest in the answer, the, the, the answer is I'm not quite sure yet. Um, however, um, 87... We, well, I will say this, we, we, this is the second time we've looked at analytics, and we ran a project with a US company a couple of years ago, um, which we never implemented because the, the, the accuracy level was 6%. Um, and it was literally, you know, I, I could have predicted better by throwing darts into a class list. So, so we are a long, long, long way forward from the first time that we did this. Um, and, you know, what I would also hope is, is, is it's a similar answer to the same to the same question, which is as we get into term and we start gathering the performance data, we should see, because we're running this every couple of days at the moment, so we should see risk levels for those students start to rise, um, and, and obviously that will then start to give us, you know, lists of students who we may need to, to then look at and, 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 uh, and, and pay some attention to. Right, uh, and again, I think the conversation will carry on into the break. Um, Dom, thank you very much. Can I give you that on behalf oh, of all? Thank, thank you. you. So we're moving into a break now until 12 o'clock, but don't forget the robot wars is about to happen just as you go.